That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> what? How y'all doing? I started having technical difficulties. Yesterday, I mentioned that an OpenReach engineer had found himself on top of a pole and had screwed up my phone line and in turn my internet connection. Right now, things are so haggard. This doesn't quite relate to the internet connection. It does, but it doesn't. I've had to jam an LED light into a blind behind my screen to hold it up so that I can light this damn video. Because I can't get my lights to turn on. <laughs> Not the I look all the other lights, just the, the ones that I like to use for video. They just, just everything's broken. Everything's broken, but you just gotta be in the groove. Right. So yesterday I said about how rad tethering is. So you can connect your phone uh, up to your computer or whatever and share your cellular data connection. That's awesome. Or if uh, you, you, know, you can do that over Wi-Fi or you can plug it in. If you don't have a Wi-Fi, you connect multiple devices up. If, if, so you can create like a virtual hotspot or a, a hotspot from your phone and that shares the cellular connection. Or you plug the cable and, you the cable and you plug it into your phone and you plug it into your computer and then you've got a wired connection to the device. And the wired connection, uh, you can use the phone for cellular or you can turn on your Wi-Fi on that device and whatever's plugged into the, into the phone becomes a, a, a Wi-Fi connection to the thing. It's magic. It's great. I also said about how you might want a travel router. Uh, you, if you have a connection at home, and I'm sure you do, get one of these, even if you don't travel, because the name implies you're going somewhere with it, get a travel router. I'm going to give you some examples based on traveling, but that's just because there's, there's some nice little tricks you can do with it that kind of really work when you're being restricted on the tinter webs. Right now, my network is a phone that is acting like a modem and a travel router. And that is being plugged into a many, many, many port switch underneath my desk to run at least the wired section of my home network. Oh, open reach, please bless me with your presence and fix my landline. Please, we don't use the landline for landlininess, we use it for tinterwebs. Tell you what, screw it, let's show you the masterwork that is my home network right the now. Expect a lighting change. Right, switched over to Brill. Let's go over there to show you router. And there you go. That's what's running my home network. Now, someone is going to say to me, hang on a minute, Skaz, there's an open reach modem there, and it looks like it's working. I'll get to that, but that's that's running the, the bulk of my network at the moment here. The, 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 the phone connected up to that little router. And then underneath my desk, you can see all of those magical, you see that big red cable there? Those are Ethernet cables, those spools, and they are going out to other wired devices in the house. And then there's a power line adapter there to send the signal, the connection around the house. Wi-Fi devices are not connected. All PCs in this house are hardwired. Well, as hardwired as they can be going over a power line, but you get what I mean. Uh, so every PC wired. Yeah, and that's running through that little booty. So yeah, the 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 open reach modem, the land light has been solid green for the ground title of about three hours today. And I just I cannot be bothered to have things connected to it at the moment. 
fact of the matter is, my landline internet connection is significantly slower than the connection that I'm getting from the little uh, GLI net dealio. The upload's a little bit faster, but the download speed is significantly slower. And it's unstable. I would rather have a slow connection that is stable than a blistering fast connection that's all over the place. And just, you know, all of the Wi-Fi devices at the moment are currently connected to the OpenReach modem. So phones and little bits like that, but just it's up and down. I imagine it will probably drop out again by o'clock in the morning. The speed is absolutely terrible anyway, so it's good enough for messaging and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, ignore the fact that that's even there. For the most part, my network is and has been running on that little travel router today. And yesterday I was just tethering up devices individually as, as they were needed. I recommend people get a travel router. Something like this. I'm not going to show you a huge amount about it like the interface or anything. Because depending on what you buy, the interface will be different. But you can buy these kind of things from tons of different brands. Prices ranging from about 20 quid up to a hundred pounds this one was it's one of their newer ones it's about 60 quid i've had tons of these back in the day my my favorite up until recently has been the slate i had a slate before i lost it so i, I bought another one and uh, i thought they had a newer one so i bought that too and i'm using the, the newer one now to run the network if you ever have Hardware failure, it's always nice to have a backup. And these are small enough just to lob in a bag or, you know, put in a drawer or something like that. So if your router does fail, you've you've always got something to go. Plus, as I say, you can connect your phone up to one of these and use your phone as a modem, which is really nice. You can also use one of those USB, uh, uh, like 4G, 3G cellular internet sticks plugged into it to to share an internet connection to my some people's routers will actually do that my old router used to do that my new one doesn't so that's why it's kind of nice to have the the little portable router but these are also useful for other stuff which is another reason why i'm going to recommend them always have spares don't just rely on that one carrier modem that you got when you got your internet connection because it will fail or it will suck these things might not be expensive, but for what they are, they're pretty powerful. All right, and and at least in the UK, in my area, you can't get a connection that will tap out one of these. I think one of these, will, the, the, the one that's connected up right now, will run up to about 300, no, 150 megabits. My connection's barely 70 at the best of times. So if you're on one if you're one of those lucky geese that's got like a 300 megabit connection, you're going to cut your connection in half. But if you need to use it as a backup, go for it. Now, other reason why I recommend it, well obviously I'm sharing a phone connection around my entire house. That's great. And it's sharing it wired around the house. Okay? You can use it. This is a cool trick. You can use it as a network repeater. So let's say you've got Wi-Fi and over that one part of your house, your Wi-Fi is kind of jank. Well, you can log into that little box and go, hey, yo, connect to that Wi-Fi. Connect to the Wi-Fi. You're like right on the edge of usable Wi-Fi. And then it will broadcast out from itself that network. It will repeat it so that you can connect to your Wi-Fi from a slightly larger distance that's pretty handy you can also then use the ethernet ports to connect wired devices to your wi-fi floating around your house i personally think that's pretty handy i mean i'm sure some people are like, dude why would i do that i've just got my phone shut up <laughs> another neat one is uh it's got like a mac cloning feature what Right, so have you ever been out and about traveling 
and you've gone to i don't know i, th I think they do this on um some hotels and you you pay to use their wi-fi and they ask for like a device id a mac address and you give them the, the mac address and they'll assign that to your account your room number or whatever and basically that's the device that you can connect to their wi-fi it's registered they'll let that connect to the to the network if you don't register your device they, they don't let you use it so then that means well i've registered my phone oh mate but now the kids can't use the ipad and i can't use my laptop or like you have to choose which devices you want to register or you pay more and that's ridiculous so here's the trick you go oh mate i'm gonna register my phone with and here's my mac address and then you go you go back to your room and you go right i've got my got my router what's the mac address on my phone and you copy the address off your phone and you pop it into the router and the router goes right i'm gonna be that and the people who are running the connection go oh yeah that device is connected it isn't it's your router pretending to be that device it, they see the same mac address so they let it on then all of the other devices you have connect to the router so you pay for that one point of access and all your other devices are in too. Okay. Another trick, if you're traveling and you're doing that whole Mac address thing, some hotels don't like it if you stream Netflix, like Netflix and, and all that kind of stuff. They want you to pay more for that kind of stuff if they'll even let you do it. So those routers also allow you to use VPNs, uh, virtual private networks. And what most people, what average Joe know them for, uh, those are a way to encrypt your traffic and allow you to spoof your location to seem like you are somewhere you're not. So you connect from point A, the VPN's point is like, I don't know, let's say I want to pretend I'm in, uh, I'm in Denmark. Right? So I connect to a Danish VPN and it takes my connection, tunnels it directly to Denmark, and then all of my traffic goes from that point, Denmark, to wherever I want to go. So as an example, let's say you want to watch Yankee Netflix. You connect to random American virtual private network and then all of your traffic, all of it, goes over to the States to the exit point of the VPN, right? And then all of a sudden, everything's like, hey, mate, you're in the States. That's rad. So all that kind of geolocation fluff, you know, Netflix then goes, oh, mate, you're American. Check out all the rad American shows, which was kind of your plan. I don't know what you want to watch this on the American Netflix that isn't elsewhere, but you can do that because it thinks you're somewhere else. Well, the VPN because it encrypts all of your traffic and sends it elsewhere. If you're at a hotel on their network, they can't exactly stop you doing anything because they can't see what you're doing. They can't see it. You've just sodded off elsewhere. Right? You've gone somewhere else to do something else. You can also do that for like sites that are uh, region blocked or blocked on certain ISPs. If certain places are blocked on the internet, like, I don't know... Oh, dare I say it, yeah, our pirate torrent sites, which, by the way, torrents aren't only used for piracy, but for folks that only associate torrents with piracy, let's pretend your ISP doesn't let you go to certain pirate sites. Well, you just go on a VPN, and you can uh, you can rig up a VPN on on your uh, on your little router, and go. Oh yeah, mate, that site isn't blocked in um, Romania. So you connect to Romania, and then you go back out from Romania. Hey, you can access the site again. How cool is that? Just a couple of points to, you know, getting one of those. And the thing is, it also tunnels your entire network. You don't have to just go per device, install a bit of software, log into the VPN, do the thing. You can just send all of your traffic over there, you know? If I want all of my devices to use American Funimation so that I can watch Dragon Ball, because that, for some reason, is only licensed in the States, 
and we've got a full of motion, so go to the States and there you go. I've, I've got it. Or let's say your uh, your modem and router just decide to kick it because of open reach. Got a backup. Pretty cool. Um, there are other little bits and bobs um, that they do. Um, you can also make VPN certificates so that people can come directly to you and you have a virtual uh, LAN. So uh, that's kind of useful. It's got a really, I'm not going to show you the interface, as I say, depending on what kind of thing you buy, feature sets will be slightly different. So I'm not going into stuff specifically for that device. But you know, feature sets will be a little bit different. User interface will be a little bit different. Even on certain brands, firmwares will have different user interfaces. But they're usually really simple, really useful little devices. Some of them even give you the option to, say, plug in a pen drive or a memory card and use it as a mini server. You could even install ad blocking scripts and things on them so that any device going through the router will automatically have ads blocked. Pretty cool. I mean, as I say, you turn it into a little media server, share your films off of a pen drive. It's so all the other devices connected and all that. Just really neat little boxes to have. And right now, that little box, the um, the barrel, is saving my ass right now until OpenReach can come around to properly sort out my connection. I should have really done this a couple of hours ago where I could have gone, network ain't working. It's just, it's not a thing. Then this would have been more, I'd have been probably more interested in it. But um, I, I think every home should have one of these. The features on them alone are pretty nice. I mean, what do they advertise on this, anyway? Uh, OpenWRT, that's the software on it. Three gigabit Ethernet ports. Dual band Wi-Fi will take up to 512 gigabytes uh, micro SDs. Um, encryption, that's a bit kind of... It's not really telling you, you know, if people don't know, what's that about? Don't it's the VPN stuff so that people can't see exactly what you're doing. You can go to another point directly and leave out. IPv6. Don't worry about it, but it's supported. And the Tor network, onion routing. So you hop, kind of like a VPN, but a, a Tor takes you through different nodes. So different hops, instead of just going straight to one point and then out. Tor will just go here, 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 over there, and you come out there. And it's just harder to track, harder, harder to trace, really. It's built into here. Um, is that it? That is, well, that's all they have on the box. Um, Really, for the money, you can get really, really cheap stuff like this. I've had travel routers and things in my bags for absolutely, absolutely years just to have like a portable network, you know, uh, a little uh, network switch and, uh, um, you know, a little router like that, bunch of cables and a way to power it, whether because they can run off battery banks. So even if your power goes out, if you can run your laptops, your iPads, and all that, you can still have a form of of, uh, of internet or LAN, at least a LAN. Have a little server to keep your kiddly links entertained and stuff. Useful bit of kit, you know. Uh, we're thinking about running a, a an actual another server here. We have a few, but having another server low powered so that. If we do have problems with the internet or the power goes out, I can literally just rig it up to a rig everything up to a battery bank, and then stuff like iPads and tablets obviously have their own batteries. They stay on, connect them up to a little router like that, and we're golden. Um, yeah, everyone needs a travel router. Everyone should have a travel router. I've got tons of the damn things. Because open reach sucks. It's all good. I'm going to head off. I've got some bits to do. Cry that my network doesn't work. Or my, <laughs> my, uh, my bodge job network works fine. The service that I pay a small fortune for every month doesn't. <laughs> <sighs> One.
Why? Why? Muppets, that's why. So I hope you're well. Go and look into travel routes. Look at all the cool little things you can do. Just go and have a look. There's loads of stuff I haven't mentioned that you can do with them. And uh, I'll see you all with a bit of luck. Maybe with an internet connection. Uh, in the next one. <laughs> An actual hardwired internet connection. I'm glad I got backups, man. Because I know people would be going insane if they didn't have their net. Some of my mates would be pulling their hair out right now. It's a good thing I'm almost bald. <laughs>